a well-known consumer health franchise, a pharmaceutical giant, and an innovative developer of medical equipment all in one company? Oh, and throw in as well a very solid balance sheet and a stable dividend yield. Grab a cup of coffee and join me and my pup for the third and last episode in the pharmaceutical series. The previous videos are linked below. Let's do a full analysis of the big veteran shark, Johnson & Johnson. As always, this is not a financial advice. You should not listen to YouTubers and make your own decisions. We're gonna cover everything. Let's dive in. Johnson & Johnson researches and develops, manufactures and sells range of products in the healthcare field worldwide. They stand out as a leader across the major healthcare industries. They're divided into three segments, consumer health, pharmaceuticals and medical devices. The consumer health segment includes a broad range of products focused in skincare and beauty under brands such as Aviano, Dr. Silab, Neutrogena and more. Over-the-counter medicines, other brands such as Tylenol, Zyrdek, Nicorette and more, and essential health products, under brands such as Johnson's, known for its baby shampoo, Band-Aid for wound care and more. The pharmaceutical segment is focused in six areas, immunologies such as rheumatoid artesis, infectious diseases such as HIV, neuroscience like mood disorders and schizophrenia, oncology, cardiovascular and metabolism such as diabetes, and pulmonary hypertension. Johnson & Johnson has dozens of leading medicines in these areas and its portfolio is well diversified. Johnson & Johnson is also a leader in developing advanced medical devices which are used for interventional solutions, orthopedics, surgery and vision fields. Their business is well diversified with 50% coming of pharmaceutical segment, 30% from the medical devices segment and 20% from the consumer segment. Their two best-seller drugs account just for 9% and 5% of 2020 revenue and their patent protected at least for a few more years. J&J able to achieve growth by increasing volume as they did in 2020 by strategic acquisitions and by investing heavily in research and development as we can see from last year's data. All of this enables them to increase their revenue and their cash flow despite the global sickness effects in 2020 as we can see from the charts. To summarize the business, Johnson & Johnson has a wide economic mode backed by intellectual property in their pharmaceutical segment, high switching costs in their medical devices segments and their well-known brands in the consumer segment. They have a well-diversified revenue stream, huge R&D investments which fill their pipeline with future blockbuster treatments, and a strong cash flow to support their growth and dividends. Also, world population is growing and aging which ensures growing requirement for their products. On the downside, they are facing several legal claims against some of their products such as Risperdal, Tal Compounder and opioid drugs which might cost them heavily and affect their reputation. They also face general regulatory risks like uh, regulatory and pricing policy issues in the United States. So their business is excellent, let's check the balance sheet. The short term assets include 25 billion of cash, 13.6 billion of receivables and an inventory of 9.4 billion. The total is 48.2. The short term liability is summarized to 42.5 and their current ratio is 1.21 which is good. Their long term debt is 32.6 billion, it is covered 64.7 by operating cash flow which is excellent and way much better than competitors such as Abbott with 40% and Eli Lilly with 37%. The debt interest payments are covered 99 times by EBIT, again excellent and way much better than the competitors. So they get a checkmark also for the balance sheet. By the way, if you like the content, please subscribe to the channel and support its growth. Thank you. Let's move to valuations. We won't use price earning future growth model because Johnson & Johnson is less of a growth company of more of a dividend and cash flow machines. We can see the latest dividends and we can see they're growing them by a rate of about 6%. We're going to use the dividend uh, discount model, the multi-stage one. We'll give them a dividend growth rate of 6% for the next 5 years and then reduce it to 3.5. The required rate of return is 7.5. And we insert the expected dividend for 2021 of 4.04 and you get a fair value of $110. Let's see what the discounted cash flow model has to say. I used analyst estimations for revenue in the next years, derived the cash flow by the cash flow to revenue average ratio in the past years. We'll take everything and input it into the model over here. Required rate of return again is 7.5. Perpetual growth, which means how much they can grow their uh, cash flow beyond 2024 is 2.5. Divide everything by the number of shares outstanding and come up with a fair value of $146. No trading today on Friday 2nd of April and the last closure price was $163, way much above our valuations. So the stock is overpriced. Let's check the charts and try to get some more insights.
Here is the Johnson & Johnson stock price charts for the last years and if we turn on our indicators we can see they are trading above the 200 days moving average and that lady they breached out of this uh, simple linear regression channel which shows us the upper and the lower bound. The question is will the stock price come back and test this uh, upper bound today with the 200 days moving average and then bounce further up or will it converge back to within the channel which uh, suits more our previous valuations. Now that we got everything covered let's wrap it up. If you like the content so far, please support the channel and subscribe. Thank you very much. Johnson & Johnson is a behemoth healthcare business. It is well diversified and the surrounding conditions of growing and aging world population supports its business growth and future growth of its dividend. It's hard to find a good buy opportunity for Johnson & Johnson in the last years, so I'll put it in my golden watch list and wait for the stock price to drop. That was the last video in the pharmaceutical series. The previous videos are linked below. Which company should we analyze next? I'm thinking about the three video series of microchips related stocks. Drop a comment below for your ideas. Until next time, ciao!